they remember kind of a famous, what used to be called cult movie, <laughs> but they're low budget movies that somehow catch on to people's attention and they enjoy them. And it was called Buckaroo Banzai and Adventure, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai in the whatever zone. I can't remember what zone it was, but <laughs> they threw out this one statement that really caught on to people's attention and kind of is practical and common sense, but he said something interesting. He said, remember, wherever you go, there you are. And sometimes Christians forget that, that wherever they are, that's where God is, or wherever you go, there God is. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that, that God has put us where we are, as we are, the way we are, and that God wants to use us and inspire us to be more than we are, so that where you are is what you are, how you are, and he can use you. You see, that's why God is in control. People want to change their circumstances. They always want to, you know, go where the grass is greener on the far side of the hill. You know how they used to sing that in the 50s, green, green, it's green, they say, on the far side of the hill. Green, green, I'm going away to where the grass is greener still. Well, if you've ever been a wanderer or a gypsy like me, you've been to the far side of the hill. And you know what? The near side, the far side, the north side, the south side, the east side, and the west side. Any place you're at can grow grass. <laughs> it's not greener and it's not worse for wear. It's just where you are and how you look at it. Because a lot of times when people are in the same place for very long, they kind of take it for granted. They abuse the privilege of where they've been put and they somehow don't think of it as being very special anymore. They don't realize that God chose them for such a time as this, for such a place as this. Where you are today is where God wants you to be. Believe it or not, as strange as that may seem, based upon your present circumstances, God has put you where you are. He may have allowed the circumstances in your life to bear fruit, meaning that maybe you reap what you sow and you're in jail or you're in prison or you're in sickness or you're in disease or you're in you know, poverty or in some way you're challenged by some of the things you've done to yourself and the world you think has done to you. But you see, there's something greater than the world at stake here. There's someone bigger than your circumstances involved. God is in you. God is with you. God has placed his promise before you in his word and said to you that he would never leave you nor forsake you, that he would always be with you. That should you choose to lay down your life for his, he would give you his life that would live eternally. And that's something that we need to recognize every day that wherever we go, there we are. And where we are is where God sent us. And as we are sent by God, we should do the things that he's told us to. Share, care, be there. Be the witness of what God can do with one soul, one heart, one person who's turned their lives over to Jesus Christ and allow him to live inside them by giving him today our will so that his will would be done. Because you see, you can do whatever you want to do, really. I mean, legally, as far as the Bible's concerned, all things are lawful to you, but not all things are expedient. While society may change laws, you will still be held accountable to what Jesus said. You're not going to be held accountable according to the laws of Syria, or Palestine, or Israel, or America, or some other nation. You're going to be held accountable to what Jesus said because that's who you're going to stand before, Jesus. You will give an accounting for your life before Jesus and exemplify your works before him. And they'll be judged as though by fire. And whatsoever is uh, wood, hay, and stubble that was just kind of like, you know, you were doing it for yourself, it'll get burned up. But the things that you did for the glory of God the Father, and you did it in Jesus' name according to the Spirit of God that was leading you, they'll be turned, as it were, into precious jewels. You will shine like the stars in the firmament. You will be rewarded for the things that you've done according to what Jesus said to do. 
But if you've been disobedient, if you really haven't done like Jesus said, or if you don't even know Jesus, then he'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Because that's what God has promised to us. We have the ability to choose, but we will suffer the consequences of it because God is not mocked. We're not getting away with anything. We pay for what we sow and we reap what we have planted. And that's why not all things are expedient, but you will suffer the consequences of breaking laws according to God's word because he will reveal who you are, whether for good as a vessel of honor or whether for wrath as a vessel not worthy to be called his own, even though he will never leave you. He will place you in prison if you've broken the law. But in there, he will also be with you because he will instruct you and guide you by his own privilege of being your father and your God. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship and unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that has promised. God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus. Rejoice inasmuch as you are a part of Jesus' sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. For when God shall be seen, so shall you. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all of his saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, which is to know the love of Jesus which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God, for God is love. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And he that keepeth his commandments dwells in him, and he in him. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Really, some people say, well, if you boil it all down, it's about love. And the reality is, yes, it is. The challenge that you have is, will you love someone in your present circumstances, where you are, as you are, the way you are? Or will you allow the Spirit of God to come inside your life today? to inspire you in a way you never thought of before, to maybe reach out to the person you think you can't love, whether it be a spouse or an ex-spouse or a child of yours or a mother or a father or an in-law or an outlaw or someone that you passed by on the street that cut you off or someone that did something to you that miserably abused you. You see, Jesus was talking about a different kind of love. He wasn't talking about the kind of love that makes you feel good. He was talking about the kind of love that God does in demonstrating his love towards the world and that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for the entire world, which means that every single human being that's alive on the earth, Jesus died for. And if God so loved the world that he died for each individual soul, then how dare we not choose to love even those of our enemies whom we say we will kill or maim or destroy in the name of God or self-defense. Rather, shouldn't we choose to do what God says to do today? To demonstrate where we are, as we are, the way we are, God can use us? It's not easy. As a matter of fact, it will cost your life to be a Christian. It will cost you everything you have to live the life that Jesus said he would give to us. A lot of people think that Christianity is something that you can just put on on Sunday and take off on Monday. That you can rearrange your schedule in order to fit God in somewhere. The reality is you will answer for your life because it was given to you by God and it will be taken from you by God. And in between times you will find that you will have an abundant life if you choose to walk with God today and allow him to live inside you as he has said he would. But if you choose to live your own way, then don't be surprised on the day that you stand before God when he gives an accounting and he says, what have you done with what my son has told you to do? And you have no answer. The reality of our relationship with God 
is all based upon knowing Jesus and asking and walking with him in a personal and intimate way. Today, that is your choice. Where you go, there you are. And when you get there, you better have Jesus with you. Because if you don't, then you've wasted your life and you've wasted the time that you lived when you could have been living in, with, and knowing the Son of God, the Son of Man.